And for this last segment, I personally like having a lot of the Crayola white, just a tiny bit of the Crayola tan. And we're gonna be dry brushing this final highlight here, right on top of the left pectoral. Now, this is a, I don't want you to think of it as this big, impressive muscle, but more like a light, airy cloud, like two big, beautiful clouds. And that should just about do it. Now, for those of you just tuning in, welcome to our Pokemon trading card game art collection, where we're making Pokemon TCG custom artworks. Today's theme, of course, being photorealism and self-portraits. Making all these special little paintings with you guys has got me thinking about the official Pokemon trading card art, and how we've seen thousands of unique illustrations over hundreds of different illustrators, so many different styles, so many different special ways of seeing Pokemon in different poses or art forms that you never get to really see in the games. And I know that we are doing a painting program right now, but I thought that we would add a nice bonus little show for you guys where I talk about some of my favorite official Pokemon trading card game parts. So I hope you guys enjoy this additional program. Number 10. For many, the energy card is by far the least exciting thing to see in a pack. But as someone that enjoys playing the Pokemon trading card game and has had to deal with looking at energies for nearly my entire life, by far my favorite are the Heart Gold Soul Silver basic energies. Each of these main energy types features a silhouette of a Johto Pokemon and a landmark from the area. They aren't wild, they aren't boring, they're just a perfect, elegant mix. My personal favorites are the Ho-Oh and Burned Tower and Ampharos with Glitter Lighthouse. These also got a foil variant in the Call Legends set, but the original non holo set are my personal favorite. Number 9 Over the years, fans have been split on Yukamori's Pokemon cards, which feature physical clay models posed instead of the traditional two-dimensional art. But me personally, I absolutely love them, and I think they add a ton of flavor and variety to sets. They produced over 100 cards, including the adorable Delta Species Ditto line, but my personal favorite single card in this collection is the Generation Swirlix. Covered in all these candies and like macarons, this is downright one of the sweetest cards of all time. See, that was some really intelligent humor because the word sweet can be used for two different- Number 8 Ancient Mew. The myth, the legend, the marketing device to get you to go buy tickets to the second Pokemon movie. Whatever it may be for you, I absolutely love how Ancient Mew looks. From its double-sided foil to its bizarre mix of stained glass and hieroglyphics, this is a card that simply stands out in the collection after all these years, even if it isn't especially valuable. My personal favorite variant of this card is the one that Japan received earlier in their print runs, which had a more detailed speckled holographic pattern. While I can't say it makes me want to go and slave the legendary birds, I do agree with Lawrence III that it makes a fine addition to any collection. Number 7 over the last five-ish years, Pokemon cards have added a new art focus. Not just on the Pokemon creatures, but on the people of the Pokemon world, in full art supporter card form. The full art supporter has given us a lot of great holographic art for teams, random NPCs, villains, heroes, Skyla, Skyla again, doing a very specific kind of stretch. But before we all end up in prison, I want to show you my favorite full art supporter, Giovanni Scheme. Not this one, but this one, the Japanese exclusive. This art truly captures the sinister mob boss power of Giovanni, and in general, this is one of my favorite official product art I've seen for this character. Unfortunately, this card was only given as part of an extremely limited and extremely expensive 20th anniversary Team Rocket briefcase. I've heard that there are less than a thousand of these bad boys out in the world, and I've seen this case sell for well over $500, even though it's only a year or so old. I guess if you want to own the boss, you need deep pockets like the boss. Number 6 I'm a huge sucker for card arts that combine to form a larger picture, and to this day I'm still in love with the original Southern Islands collection. These cards were originally packaged as three card postcard sets, which combined to form six larger images over two separate islands. If I had to narrow it down to a single favorite, I've always really loved the jungle themed postcard. I've always found it cool that most of the Pokemon in it first debuted in the Jungle TCG set. It's like symbolic or something. Like poetry, sort of, they rhyme. 
Number five. One of the silliest gimmicks in trading card games is the secret rare. Cards so rare, so valuable that they contain numbers that go beyond the intended set count. What is this witchcraft? And for the newest card on today's list, I love the secret rare Mewtwo GX from Shining Legends. Mewtwo has really grown on me since we did that Many Faces of Mewtwo video a few years back, and this secret rare features Mewtwo contained within a test tube, still being experimented on. Not only is this a cool, quiet take on an otherwise active and aggressive legendary Pokémon, but it is by far one of the best uses of holographic foil on a Pokémon trading card game card to date. I'm not sure if these shots are doing it justice, but it's just one of those cards that is so cool you gotta see it in person. Number 4 Just like cards that merge to form an image, I really love cards that merge to form a story. These aren't extremely common, but one of the absolute best came in 2013 with the Legendary Treasures Embor line, originally printed in the Japanese EX Battle Boost set. Here we follow a young trainer as both he and his family evolve, first as a child with the Tepig, then with a Pig Knight as a teenager and a new younger sister, and then finally starting a family with a child of his own and everyone gathered around the Embor. Did it seriously take this kid like 20 years to finish a single evolution line? But if we look past that, it is really touching, and I think it's a great example of the many different ages of players and collectors of the Pokémon trading card game today. Number 3 Tomokazu Kamiya might be the single most controversial artist of Pokémon cards ever. His body of work spans hundreds of cards and nearly 20 years. As a practitioner of primitism, he paints with a specifically unbalanced and unsophisticated way, often warping Pokémon in absurd and even grotesque ways. A lot of people hate these quote-unquote ugly cards. But of course, because my opinions are weird, I love them. They really stick out and they really stretch Pokémon card art in unique ways that I find fascinating. My favorite card is this Hypno from Breakpoint, which pairs up with this Clefairy card as well. These cards really tell the story of Hypno's terrifying, dream-induced kidnapping in a way that hasn't really been expressed before in official art. This balance between dream and nightmare truly is something else. Also, even though I'm not rating these cards for anything other than their art alone, the ability Goodnight Babies is just too perfect here. Number 2 If I had to pick a single favorite TCG set as a whole for favorite art, I think my pick would be Sky Ridge. This massive set of over 150 cards features an amazing variety of art. I'm truly lucky my wife collected this entire set before it skyrocketed to absurd prices. It's the last set from Wizards of the Coast, and the last set to feature a Kadabra card. It's full of tons of cool ideas and themes, but my favorite thread is this mysterious symbol that keeps cropping up in several of the cards, leading to this head honcho itself, Crystal Ho-Oh. This is a downright gorgeous card, and it looks even better when you can see it enlarged on the set's unique, partially transparent box topper card. It's by far the most primitive looking art compared to other crystal cards, but I think it just makes it stand out for me. It's just a really cool card. Number 1 Without a doubt, some of the best art in the history of the Pokémon trading card game comes from the short-lived Legend mechanic, which began with the Japanese printing of HeartGold SoulSilver in 2009. These cards force you to play them in a two-card set horizontally first creating single Pokémon with Lugia and Ho-Oh, but afterwards combining legendary Pokémon together to create a tandem strike. Only nine total Legend card sets exist, but each and every one of them is a sight to behold. Even the text on them spills all over the card in a really strange but kind of epic way. My favorite combination, and favorite card of all time, belongs to Darkrai and Cresselia Legend from Triumphant. These Pokémon typically clash as rivals, and I just freaking love the way that these two look together. Cresselia is smooth and elegant, while Darkrai is twisted and maniacal. And of course, this card combo also later received a jumbo-sized promo card that combines the two and shows you all the details blown up. Like most of the cards on today's list, this card never saw any real competitive play, but Darkrai and Cresselia still remain as my favorite art in the Pokémon TCG so far. So those are my 10 favorite Pokémon TCG arts. It was darn near impossible to cut it down to 10. Like I said, I've seen thousands and thousands of card arts. So many just barely missed the cut. And art is so subjective anyways, but those are my personal favorites. If you have different ones, and I'm sure you do, 
Share your favorite Pokemon TCG art either in the comment section below, let us know the card and set number, but otherwise, uh, shoot me a tweet at the TheJWits, since there you can attach the actual image. I'm gonna try and retweet a bunch of awesome Pokemon TCG art sent in by you guys, uh, some of your favorites over the years, because there's just so much cool stuff to celebrate. Speaking of cool art, thank you Artsy Theo, aka Theologically. You can find her website in the description below, but she is the artist behind this quote unquote masterpiece. I cannot believe she humored me on this one, but we had a ton of fun with it. She's done so much art, whether it be the custom Pokemon art videos or thumbnails or things like that. So thank you so much for your work, Theo. Hope you guys have an awesome day. Thanks for checking out our little projects today. And I'll see you guys next time with more Nintendo content.